Who is Shanks? No, like seriously, how come in a thousand chapters of One Piece, we still don't know his last name, his lineage, or even any of his goals and motivations? What if I told you that Shanks is a former celestial dragon with the will of D, and that there's actually so much evidence that you may start to think, how has no one noticed this before? I reread every chapter that Shanks is in over and over and over again to find out who he truly is without there being any plot holes in the theory. After rereading every chapter and paying attention to all the details, I came to the conclusion that not only is Shanks the son of Roxdi Zebek and a celestial dragon, but that it's been foreshadowed all the way back to chapter 1. I know this all sounds like crazy talk, but trust me, after this video, you're either going to find yourself screaming out of pure hype or staring out into the distance questioning everything you've ever thought about One Piece. Wizard of Oars here, and today I'll be starting a huge, mega, 5 part or 5 video god valley theory that's going to be revolved around guys like Rox, Law, Blackbeard, Lunarians, Nika, NL, Shanks, and much, much more. So I humbly ask you to like, subscribe, and even hit that notification bell just like Luffy and Skypea because this is only the first part of this series and trust me, you're going to want to see the next ones as well. To start this theory off, let me explain why I believe he's a half-former celestial dragon. So the first piece of evidence that proves this goes all the way back to the first chapter of One Piece. The way this chapter tells us this is because this backstory of Shanks and Luffy shows us that Shanks and a celestial dragon, Corazon, are direct parallels with each other. If you look closely, you'll realize that Shanks and Luffy's backstory is almost the exact same thing as Corazon and Law's. Shanks is the Corazon to Luffy, a kid Luffy looks up to Shanks. Shanks. A kid Law looks up to Corazon. Shanks steals one of the most important devil fruits in the entire story from the world government and then doesn't give it to Luffy, but he still ends up eating it. Corazon stole one of the most important devil fruits in the story that's apparently even worth up to 5 to 10 billion berries from the world government and gave it a Law. In Luffy's backstory, Shanks ended up saving him by sacrificing his body. In Law's backstory, Corazon ended up saving Law by sacrificing his body. Because of the backstory, Luffy ended up up being inspired to be just like Shanks, a pirate who fights for his friends. Because of Law's backstory, he ended up being inspired by Corazon, a guy that seems to be a pirate that also has connections to certain marines. Luffy ended up wearing the straw hat, which is something that represents Shanks and the next time he'll see him. Law ended up wearing a jacket that says Corazon on it, which obviously represents Corazon. Another thing is that Law got a heart tattoo which may also represent Corazon, since Corazon means heart in Spanish. Lastly, Luffy's pirate crew name ended up being called the Straw Hats, which is an emblem that he got from Shanks. Law's crew name ended up being called the Heart Pirates, which could either represent Corazon since it's the English translation for heart, or it could represent the emblem that Corazon gave him, which is the devil fruit shaped like a heart. So with all these parallels, the last one may end up being that Shanks is a good former celestial dragon who helps someone with the will of D, just like how Corazon is a good former celestial dragon who helps someone with the will of D. More proof of these two being connected is that Law and Luffy are currently allies, which could show that Corazon and Shanks have some ties together. Even with all these parallels between the two, somehow there's even more, which has to do with their close ones. Shanks has someone that was like a brother to him, who's represented as a clown. Corazon has a blood-related brother that depicts a clown since Doflamingo's nickname is Joker. The guy that Shanks used to consider a brother is a clown that became a warlord and was running the black market. Corazon's brother is a clown that became a warlord and that also ran the black market. Both both sets of brothers also ended up knocking it along in the end and going their separate ways. Buggy hates Shanks because he believes he made him eat the devil fruit, while Doflamingo hates Corazon for betraying him. Another parallel with Shanks and Corazon could be that they are both on pirate crews with Jolly Rogers that have their left eye crossed out. Now with all these pieces of evidence, I wouldn't be surprised if Oda is waiting for a huge reveal for Shanks, which is that he's a celestial dragon. In Dressrosa, we learned about Dolphy being a celestial dragon and Law being a Will of D member, which was hundreds of chapters after they were introduced. If Oda can wait a hundred chapters for less important characters like Doflamingo, then I definitely think he's got some insane reveals with Shanks after a thousand chapters. Now the next reason I believe Shanks is a celestial dragon is because of Blackbeard. Blackbeard is known to be Shanks' biggest enemy in One Piece. In fact, not only his biggest enemy, but possibly his only enemy. We've never seen Shanks have any real enemy as it seems he can talk head to head with damn near everyone 
and not cause too much conflict. Sure, Shanks may have had a single clash and disagreement with Whitebeard, or he may have been considered Mihawk's biggest rival, but it doesn't really seem like he was ever enemies with any of these guys. Even the Gorsei allows him to walk straight into the room while the reverie is taking place to discuss a certain pirate. I also believe this may show us that Shanks has former Celestial Dragon blood in him because he's somehow allowed to schedule meetings with the highest known power in the world. I don't think they'd meet up with anyone else other than admirals or another celestial dragon, especially in the time of the reverie and the time of their meeting with Imsama. Also, in this meeting, many believe Shanks was talking about Blackbeard when he said, we need to discuss a certain pirate, which definitely could have been the case since he always seems to be worried about what Blackbeard is doing. Now, going back to how Shanks' only enemy is Blackbeard, what if the two of them are fated to clash as one is a Will of D member while the other is a celestial dragon? Not only this, but Blackbeard isn't only a member of that clan, but he's also an evil one with the D initial. Shanks, on the other hand, may be part Celestial Dragon, but he's a good one and not evil like the rest of them. This is kind of interesting considering that usually those with the D are on the right side of the story and the Celestial Dragons are on the wrong side. I wonder how Oda will make this play out. I'll discuss more on why I don't think Shanks is evil or a villain later on in the video, but that's after all the rock stuff too. The next reason I think Shanks could be part god is because he's based off of an actual god. Shanks seems to be based off of the god of war in Norse mythology. This god was remembered as Tyr. This Norse god Tyr offered his arm to a wolf in order to balance the realms. This kind of sounds like what Shanks did, which was to offer his arm to bet on the new generation. Another direct influence from Tyr would be that Tyr used his wisdom and power to stop wars instead of start them. Just like how Shanks stopped one of the biggest wars at Marineford with his power and wisdom. We even see an interesting quote from Sengoku when Shanks pulls up, which is, only because it's you red haired. I remember the first time I saw this, I thought to myself, that has to be foreshadowing something down the line because it's just such a strange thing to say to a pirate. Only because it's Shanks? Why only Shanks? Well maybe because he's a former celestial dragon and Sengoku wouldn't want to upset the Gorosei. The God of War title has a ring to it that makes it seem violent, but it's actually the complete opposite. The God of War in One Piece has the ability to stop wars and it seems like he's always trying to do so even when he meets with Whitebeard. Okay, so now that with everything I've now explained, that's pretty much why I believe Shanks is a former celestial dragon, but now let me tell you why I also think he has the will of D. Before we get to that though, make sure you leave a like on the video if you've liked even one thing that I've said so far. The first reason I believe he has the will of D yet again takes us all the way back to chapter 1. In chapter 1, we see that Shanks wore the straw hat, which we now know he received from Goldie Roger. Now, this hat isn't just some random thing to have her wear. It's a hat that is specifically inherited by the D-Clan and an important symbol from the Void Century. I just don't see Roger giving this hat to some average Joe. He'd most likely only give it to someone that was destined to wear it just like how he was and just like how Luffy is. If the Joy Boy from the Void Century also wore the straw hat, which is what most people believe since there's a giant one in a freezer in Pangaea Castle, then I think that's even more evidence that Shanks wearing the hat may show us that he's a D-member since he's inheriting the will of the man who started it all. Another thing from chapter 1 that proves this is that Shanks says that Luffy reminds him a lot of how he was when he was a kid. So basically, he's saying that Luffy and himself are somewhat the same. Kind of like how Luffy and Roger are also the same. Maybe that's why he gave Luffy the straw hat. Because he knows Luffy can carry his and Roger's will. Maybe that's also why Roger gave Shanks the straw hat. Because Shanks reminded himself of when he was a kid. So he knew Shanks would inherit the will of the straw hat. Just like how it was Shanks' favorite hat, Luffy's favorite hat, probably at some point also Roger's favorite hat, it was most likely also a Joy Boy's favorite hat. We even know Luffy is the same as Shanks since we see him fight for his friends and even doing the exact same thing as Shanks in a bar fight. Just like how they both didn't fight in the bar, they ended up fighting the same villains that mess with them after they mess with their friends, Luffy and Cricket. Another parallel would be that Luffy and Blackbeard have been direct enemies since the first time they met, just like how he's Shanks' biggest enemy. This is just like how Rox, who seems to be inherited by Blackbeard, was Roger's number one enemy. Basically, with all these parallels, we can assume that just like Roger and Luffy, Shanks also has the middle initial of D. The only main difference between the three of them would be that Luffy is a lot goofier and more silly since he ate the model Nika fruit, but that's only because the fruit made him become that way. Without that, he'd 
act exactly like Roger and Shanks do, I truly think all three of them were fated to meet by the will of D. Another reason I think Shanks may have the will of D is because of the movie Red. Now, I know it hasn't come out yet or anything, and it most likely won't be canon, but do you guys really find it a coincidence that the logo for Red has Shanks' scar right over the D? I mean, what if Oda told them to make the logo that way? We do already know he's somewhat involved in the movie, so who knows, maybe we'll get something on the will of D in the movie, although I think it'd be a whole lot better if we learned Shanks' whole name and purpose in the manga. So now with these two things being said, now you know why I think Shanks has the will of D, but now let me tell you what I believe his full name is. I believe there could be two reasons the world government didn't show us his name. One, because he has the D initial and the last name of a celestial dragon. They may want to hide the fact that such a thing could even exist. The other, more logical reason would be because he has the last name of a man who was erased from history, Rox D. Sebek. Why else would the world government have to hide Shanks' last name unless it was a name that they wanted erased from history? Even with this logical explanation to not knowing his last name yet, there is still actual evidence from the manga that may prove to us Shanks' lineage. In chapter 434, when Shanks and Whitebeard meet, Whitebeard tells him that when he looks at his face, the scars he got from him start to ache. Who would be him? Who does Shanks' face remind Whitebeard of? Who does he look like? I don't think his face alone reminds him of Roger, because even though Shanks was a member of his crew, his face doesn't look anything like him. Also, when Whitebeard meets Buggy, he doesn't say that he reminds him of him, showing that it's not Roger that he was talking about. So, if it's not Roger, then who else could have legitimately given Whitebeard scars and look like Shanks at the same time? Well, what if Rox was the one that gave him the scars and also the one that looks like Shanks? I mean, Rox definitely seemed to be the one guy that could actually defeat Whitebeard in the fight or at least scar him. Plus, the Rox pirates were known for not getting along at all, so I wouldn't be surprised if Whitebeard fought the captain. We also know that Shanks' face didn't remind Whitebeard of Blackbeard because he didn't even know that the scar on Shanks' face was from Blackbeard until later in the chapter when Shanks told him. Another thing with Rox possibly being the father of Shanks has to do with the God Valley incident. First of all, how did Rox even learn about its existence, where it was, and how it would make him the king of the world? Like, how do you even discover so much about a place without being a celestial dragon or high class marine? What if Rox met and married a former celestial dragon, which told him all the secrets from God Valley to Imsama? Wouldn't that explain how he learned so much about the world government and even realized that he could become the king of the world? Wouldn't you have to know that there is a king of the world to want to know how to become one? This could all explain why Rox was so crazy and was attempting tasks even harder than that of Roger. It could also explain why the government erased his whole name from history. Like think about it, he didn't achieve his task of becoming the king of the world and he seemed to have lost the war at God Valley and even then they still erased it from history. Like they didn't even do that to Roger, the man who literally found the one piece and learned all the secrets of the world. Now that should show you something. By the way, all this part on Rox and God Valley plays a major part Part to my huge mega 5 part god valley theory which I will be getting to in upcoming videos. Whatever happened there must have been more insane than what Roger found at Laugh Tale because the whole incident was lost in time. Now tying it all back to Shanks, so if Rox and his wife were at god valley, what if they also took Shanks there and as they lost the battle, the Roger pirates saved the baby Shanks from being killed by the world nobles. Roger himself is a good guy at heart and would save an innocent baby even if it had the blood of his worst enemies, Celestial dragons and rocks. Now you may ask, why do I believe this? Like the chances of this are so unlikely and it seems to only be speculation. Well, the reason I think this could happen is because in chapter 551, Roger tells Garp how the world government will try to kill Ace just because of what he did. He tells him how no child bears sin and asks Garp to take care of Ace. Maybe this belief of Roger, which is that all babies or children are innocent, will be shown to us again later in the story when he takes a baby Shanks from God Valley and raises him. Even though Rox and Celestial Dragons are his biggest enemies, he still believes the children of them are innocent, just like how even though he's a highness pirate and criminal, that doesn't mean his newborn son is. Also, maybe just like how Roger raised a baby that wasn't his but had the will of D, maybe the same thing happened to his son. The D clan are a clan bonded by fate, so Shanks having the will of D could tie in with that. I believe all of this could definitely be a form of foreshadowing to how Shanks even ended up as a Roger pirate. Plus, 
does, Oda seems to hint at Shanks being a crew member since he was a baby, since in Odin's flashback, we see Roger say that he hasn't spent time with a baby in ages while holding Toki. After this, Ray Lee says that it reminds him of the old days. This shows that at some point in time, there was a baby on the crew of the Roger Pirates. In this same flashback, we also see Blackbeard ask about Buggy and Shanks, and Marco tells him that they've been around for ages. This proves that Shanks was a Roger Pirate for a long time, probably ever since he was a baby. He was most likely the baby that Ray Lee was referring to. So now that you understand why I believe Shanks may be the son of Rox, and even looks like him, now what if this is also the reason why Oda still hasn't shown us how Shanks stopped Kaido from going to Marineford? What if in this meetup, Kaido says something about how he looks just like his former captain? I think that would be really interesting and would also overall just make sense since that's also similar to what Whitebeard said. Doesn't it just make sense that Shanks has some sort of lineage of extremely strong pirates since he seems to have some of the strongest conquerors hockey in the entire series? I mean, it usually seems that all of the strongest and most important pirates in One Piece can have some sort of important family or clan. You don't just become a Yonko for no reason, you definitely need the strength or crew to back it up. Also, just speaking of the Yonko, there seems to be a strange trend with them and rocks. First off, Big Mom, Kaido, and Whitebeard were part of the rocks before they became emperors. Blackbeard lives on the same island that rocks lived on and he seems to be inheriting his will in some way. So since four of the original Yonko were connected to rocks, wouldn't it also make sense that Shanks is too? Shanks would make it 5 out of 5 Yonko until Buggy and Luffy also became them. Who knows, maybe Buggy and Luffy also have a connection to rocks, but as of right now, it doesn't seem like it. So now with everything that I've now explained, let me tell you why this is so important to Shanks as a character and why him being half of each side defines him so well. So remember earlier how I said that Shanks is based off of the Norse god of war? Well, let's go back to that idea of how Shanks is the guy who stops wars and acts as a peacemaker between the pirates and the government. With him being half celestial dragon, half will of D, he is the mediator between all. That's why he's a war stopper and a peacemaker. I believe in the final war, Shanks will not be directly attacking either the government or the pirates. I think he'll be in between since he has friends on both sides. For example, he will obviously help Luffy, but he'll attack and fight Blackbeard. Both are key to taking down Im sama but Shanks will still be in between, even with his own clan. The one who inherited Rox's will ends up fighting Rox's very own son in the final war. It would just be ironic if the one that's trying to stop Blackbeard from achieving his dream is Rox's son himself. I feel like that would be something Oda would do to be honest. I mean, we do always see sons in One Piece going a different path from their fathers or grandparents. Even with the world government, I believe he'll fight alongside someone like Garp because he's his friend's grandparent. Shanks will pretty much side with any marine that doesn't go against Luffy. As in the first chapter, the whole purpose of the bar scene was to show how he deals with people and his intentions. Basically, if you mess with Luffy, he'll mess you up. And if you don't, then he's cool with you. That's why I can definitely see Shanks going against guys like Eam, the Gorosei, and certain admirals. I mean, if Shanks does have the will of D, it's only his destiny to fight them in the end, even if he is part Celestial Dragon. Basically, Shanks will just be an ally of Luffy, which is why I believe we should stop trying to say the theory that Shanks is a villain or that Shanks will turn on Luffy in the end. Honestly, I can't think of a single way that this happens because Oda already told us in the first chapter exactly how Shanks is as a character. Also, him being a Celestial Dragon with the Will of D could also be represented with what he's already done to the world government. First of all, he talked to the five elders in a secret meeting, discussing a certain pirate. This seems to be him showing off his Celestial Dragon side, as I don't see how they allow any Will of D member to meet with them unless they met a certain criteria. The other only thing we learned about, about what Shanks did to the world government, is when he stole the gum gum fruit from them. This is obviously showing his Will of D side, since that fruit seems to be directly tied with them and the Void Century. Anyways, what do you guys think of this theory? Do you think Shanks is the son of a Celestial Dragon, the son of rocks, or both. Let me know anything you feel in the comments below. Also, please remember to like the video if you liked anything out of it. Feel free to subscribe because this is only the first part to the huge 5 part god valley theory that I brought up before. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching and please remember to have a great day.